truck before time runs out! Hey, Gardiver! I got some primo merchandise here! <laughs> oh, jackpot! These noise pickers are gonna make us some major bucks! Hmm. Wonder what's in here? You crazy! Can't you read? Been meaning to learn? It says biotoxin, genius. Make it death in a can. Put this stuff on my wheels. Murphy shot to death in the line of duty. Legally, he's dead. We can pretty much do what we want. There's a new guy in town. His name's Robocop. Murphy, it is you. Good evening. Our top stories. Opponents to gun control shoot down compromise bill in Congress, leaving two dead and five wounded. And England's royal couple resigns after winning the Irish sweepstakes. But first, in local news, the end is in sight for Roy Macklin. That's right, Rocky. The self-confessed mass killer is scheduled to die by self-electrocution at midnight. Though Michigan has no death penalty, Macklin is the first to opt for the new Kevorkian option, which legalizes state-assisted suicide for convicted murderers. Macklin's final moments will be shown live on the hit pay-per-view show, Execution Tonight. There'll be a lot of sleepy folks at work tomorrow, Bo. That's right, Rocky. I'll be watching. On a sadder note, the fate of ace crime fighter Robocop remains unknown at this hour. Exposed to a deadly biotoxin while he was pursuing the notorious Sweepers gang, Robocop and his Robocruiser were taken to an OCP decontamination facility, where both remain under quarantine. Evacuation hoses were installed. 
Communications were cut off when he sealed the cruiser. We can only hope he had time to isolate his organics before the biotoxin took effect. How did a bunch of sweepers get a hold of a class one biotoxin? That's what I'd like to know. Commencing decontamination. Evacuation at 20%. 40%. 16%. 80%. 90%. Decontamination complete. saying this has been missing for two years? I was on the university task force. Roy Macklin used a canister of ricinex just like this one, murdered 16 people in the registrar's office. Yeah, I remember the case. Three canisters were stolen from the university's research lab. Right, I found the second one in his apartment. He said he destroyed the third one. He said. So how did the sweepers get hold of it to use on Robo? I intend to find that out, Sergeant. And I intend to find out why Macklin lied. Well, let's get to it. Oh, Robo. Nice to have you back. Thank you, Sergeant. Announcing the newest breakthrough from Omni Consumer Products in the war against crime. Leader, the law enforcement agency Data Exchange Relay, an interactive database designed to link public and private law enforcement agencies around the world into a single highway internet that no criminal can hide from. Leader, the ultimate weapon against crime. Very impressive, Mr. Sullivan. The sales campaign is practically a formality, Mr. Chairman. Everyone is jumping on the bandwagon. And the government agencies are willing to back us up? Well, sir, District Attorney Gless himself insisted on being here today to lend his support. Why don't we let him answer that? Richard? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Leader Nett will advance the efficiency and coordination of law enforcement data by decades, Mr. Chairman. OCP has the full endorsement of my office for this bold new venture. When Leader goes online at midnight tonight, OCP stands to realize a 300% return on investment in the first six months alone. Young man, let me offer you my congratulations. I'm sure that Leader will be a big success. Bold new venture. Nice touch, Dick. The old man ate it up. Listen, Billy, I don't like being mocked, and I don't like being dragged down here to your little dog and pony show. I am a public servant. I'm not a corporate shill. This is not good for my image. Listen, Dick. You'll do what I say, and you'll keep your mouth shut. You both know your image is as phony as your law degree, and I can expose it with one computer disk. Listen, Billy, you said you would destroy those files. Oh, and I will, when I get what I'm after. Listen, Billy. I did my part. Macklin is on death row, isn't he? And not off the hook till Macklin pushes the button, Dicky, babe. Then we're both bulletproof and rich. Hi, Detective Madigan, Metro South. Yeah, go right in. Roy, we're losing you on camera two. Could you cheat a little to the right? How's that? Beautiful, Roy. <laughs> You're a natural. Just a few more minutes and we'll be finished with the walkthrough. Hang in there, babe. It was a real pleasure working with a voluntary victim, I can tell you. Most of them kick and scream, wreck my shots. They just don't care. 
He hasn't expressed any second thoughts, then. Not a zip. I'm telling you, I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, could you speak up? Yeah, we got something going on back here. Yeah, tight. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Camera three. Roar, you need to get a level. Could you give us your last words again? I wantonly murdered 16 innocent people just to watch them die. And that's your cue to hit the button. That's great, Roy. Just remember, look at the camera. Okay, people, that's lunch. One hour. Hi, I'm Detective Madigan. All right, the warden called. He had 10 minutes before his wardrobe fitting. Hello, Roy. Roy, do you remember me? Officer Madigan. Who is that? Name's Madigan. Cop from Metro South. She arrested Macklin. Find out what she's up to. We found the missing canister of rice and eggs, Roy. One of the three you stole from the university lab. You said you destroyed the third one. Do you remember that? Yes, I burned it in the lab's hazardous waste incinerator. I have the third canister, Roy. I burned it in the lab's hazardous waste incinerator. Damn it, Roy. Why are you lying? What's going on? Officer Madigan, isn't it? Richard Gless, I'm the DA. We met at Macklin's trial. Right, I remember. Uh, you better be getting Mr. Macklin to wardrobe, hmm? Is there some kind of problem, officer? I'm not sure. We've found new evidence that contradicts Macklin's confession. The canister of rice and eggs he said he destroyed turned up last night. You're not suggesting he's, he's innocent. He confessed to his crime officer. I'm just saying it's worth checking out. A man's life is at stake here. Of course. Well, you keep me posted on anything you turn up. I will do that. Thank you. Did you hear what she said? They've got the third can of ricin. I did see the report on the news. Sweeper gang. Petty crooks. You kept it? Why would you do something like that, Billy? Well, let's just say I can't stand to throw away anything that has future value. Calm down. Storage rental can't be traced. What if the police decide to reopen the Macklin case? It's up to you to make sure that doesn't happen. Right, Dick? Basement checking the water recycler. Okay, okay. I was having a drink. Got a little problem. But I'm no killer. I'm just a janitor. That was his statement one hour after I arrested him. Voice stress analysis indicates truth level of 98%. Okay, let's try his confession three months later. I wantonly murdered 16 innocent people just to watch them die. The voice stress readings are identical. Oh, they can't both be true. His confession is word for word what he said to me less than an hour ago. My God, I thought this was open and shut two years ago. What if we got the wrong guy? And that confession came after a 28-day psychiatric assessment. Who did it? Dr. Audrey Frank, is there an address? No. I'll check with the DA's office. One of our snitches gave a location on the sweeper's floating market. Robo? I'm hoping you can ID the creep who hit you with that gas. It will be my pleasure, Sergeant. All right. We're cooking. I'll stay at the shrink. Economy. You. I guess it's true what they say. There's way too much violence on TV. I paid $42 for this TV and uh, look at it. Management assumes no responsibility for damage caused due to improper use. Well, that was plug it in. Well, there you go. Mr. 
Connor, but please, if, if I could just have my money back. Sorry, friend. No refunds. No returns. I guess you didn't read the fine print on your sales contract. Sales contract? I didn't see a contract. What contract? This one. Now, you want to talk to me again about a refund? In the future, only do business with reputable merchants. Okay, round them up. This is the punk we are looking for. You want to explain how you came to possess a canister of rice and X? I think I want a lawyer. You'll need one. Possession of a biotoxin is a class one felony. Class one? Hey, it wasn't mine. I just stole it. Honest. <laughs> Please continue. We got it when we hit the Snorlax. Was in that trunk. Which storage bay was the trunk in? Look, I'm gonna remember. remember. Voice stress analysis indicates he is telling the truth, Sergeant. Book him. GT merchandise. So, back to square one. Perhaps not. What, this old university t-shirt? A possible clue, Sergeant. But it will take a little... sweat. So when the district attorney told me the police were investigating you, I came right over, Audrey. I'm glad you're here, Billy. You need help. Keeping that rice and X was a clear manifestation of your subconscious desire to be caught. No, it was a clear manifestation of my greed. You know I would never betray you to the police, Billy. You can trust me. But I don't take those kind of chances, Audrey. You know that. You mean the registrar? No, not him. He had to go. How else could I turn his petty little scam selling phony degrees into something really worthwhile? No, it was the other 15 people in his office I wasn't sure about. So... I understand, Billy. You were just, uh, being smart. And what would you know about being smart? Your degrees aren't even worth the paper they're printed on. Put that flat scan down, Billy. This kind of paranoia is common among child prodigies. I'm not paranoid. Everybody is against me. People have been jealous of me my whole life. I really think it would help if you could talk through your aggression. Why don't I pencil you in for tomorrow? How's it about two o'clock? Look what I did with Roy Macklin. He's on death row right now. He really believes he killed all those people. Unfortunately, his recollections are a bit inflexible. I'm better at psychotropic therapy now. I've tried all the new drugs. I could augment his memory implants. Give me a chance. I'm sorry, Audrey. I'm afraid our time is up for this session. Billy, you really need to deal with your hostility. Hello, Dr. Frank? Is anyone here? Dr. Frank, are you all right? I hate you, Mother. Beta 2, officer needs assistance. All units, all frequencies. Beta 2 needs assistance. Room 1280 tapped.
Thanks, Murphy. Don't thank me. Thank Charlie. Did you see who did this? No. But whoever it is is going the distance to make sure why Macklin kills himself. Well, talk to Sergeant to call the DA to ask for a stay on Macklin's Kevorkian. Any luck with you? I've scanned all records on the Rice and X attack on the University Registrar's office two years ago. Student records during that period indicate tampering. As in doctoring grades? Yes, including various members of OCP's executive staff, and Dr. Audrey Frink. Ooh, the trail's heating up, isn't it? I scored! You were right, Robo. The DNA match is an alumnus of Delta City University. Is this a friendly visit, or am I under arrest? That depends on your answers. In that case, I'll tell you how my lawyer would answer. She'd say, Mr. Sullivan has never rented a bay at Storlock Storage. She'd also say his genetic print may have been lifted off an item of clothing he donated to charity several years ago. How would you answer those questions? I wouldn't. Not without my lawyer present. Thanks, Sarge. Sarge said the DA refused to reopen the case, not enough evidence. And that snot-nosed little VP knows we don't have enough to arrest him. He is cocky. That will be his downfall. Yeah, but meanwhile, Macklin's being railroaded to his death in five hours. The only thing that will stop this self-execution now is Roy Macklin. I don't think we can reason with the guy. He's pretty much a zombie. Try, Madigan. What about Billy Sullivan? He is mine. Roy, do you know Billy Sullivan? He had the third canister of rice and eggs you said you destroyed two years ago. Now, how is that possible, Roy? Roy, I don't think you killed anybody. I think Dr. Frank put those memories in your head. No. I killed those people just to watch them die. I deserve to die. Inside. This better not be a waste of our time. I've got a 190 IQ, Molotov. I'm too smart to waste your time. Hey, boss! What is it? What? You think you're so smart? You're followed by Robocop. Man your stations. That robot does not leave here in one piece. Sonny. 
ashes to ashes, scrap to scrap. We talk business, eh? Powerful criminals in the world. Reggie Braga, boss of the Carioca Mob for the entire Northeast. I am simply a poor businessman trying to make his way in an alien land. From Sicily, Mr. Rocco Corbon, boss of the Mediterranean Syndicate. From the UK, the Iron Maiden of Crime herself, Margaret Cray. Just call me Maggie. And Mr. Zero head of the ruling Yakuza family in Tokyo. And last but not least, Vlad Molotov, godfather of the Russian Mafia, who only moments ago rid the criminal world of its greatest foe, Robocop. Hey, well done, hey. Molotov. Center for the Morally Challenged in Detroit, Michigan. It's the show everyone's dying to see. Execution tonight with special guest host Umberto Ortega. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the show. Two years ago, on a warm spring day, Roy Macklin turned the halls of academia into a slaughterhouse. Well, tonight he's going to pay for that crime when he enters this chamber and ends his own life by self-electrocution. <laughs> And we're going to show it to you live because you have the right to see it. And we got a lot of special guests with us tonight, so why don't we just take a minute now to meet some of them, huh? Right over here in his usual front row seat, I see that famous film director, Otis Pike. Big fan, never misses the show. And with him is that hot, hot, hot new Hollywood starlet, Cindy Summers. <laughs> That's your wife, your son, Roy. You can leave them behind alone. Is that what you want for them, Roy? They'll get lots of money. Movies, books, interviews, my life sentence rebate from the state. That's not the answer, boy. 
Listen to me. I came for money. I can tell you it does nothing for a family. You don't understand. I understand that you're depriving your family of what they need the most. You. All the money in the world's not going to make up for that loss. I'm guilty. I want to die. This relay terminal is linked to Leader, which in turn is connected to every law enforcement agency in the world. When I enter a special program, every scrap of electronic data about each of you will be deleted. To the computers of the world, you won't exist. No outstanding warrants, no parole violations, no record. You'll be so clean, you could even hold down a government job. When can you do this thing? The second you put your deposits on the table. Five million each. the first Kevorkian-style execution in the state of Michigan, and the excitement is building, right, girls? So oh, I'm just tingling all over, Humberto. <laughs> Me too, Barbie. And now, let's have a big hand for the real star of tonight's show, Roy Macklin! You're just in time, Mr. Bess. We're introducing Macklin now. Okay, cue the condemned. Key on, Roy. Arrested him two years ago. One can only imagine the satisfaction she must be feeling. You don't have to do this, Roy. Please, you're the only one that can stop this. Come on, Roy. Goodbye, Detective Madigan. And so, Roy Macklin takes that fateful walk on his journey to eternity. <laughs> he looks calm and relaxed as each step brings the twisted killer that much closer to his final destiny. So don't go away, folks. There's plenty more to come right after these messages. And now, back to execution tonight with Umberto Ortega. We are back as Roy Macklin comes to the end of his last mile. So, let's have a warm welcome for the man of the hour. Hey there, folks, Mr. Roy Macklin! minutes and counting our lovely assistants Barbie and Raquel strap Roy into the chamber now as you know Michigan has no capital punishment so the choice to end his life is Roy's and his alone Mr. Bless, you've got to stop this we have reason to believe Roy Macklin was framed I'm afraid it's out of my hands. no it's not you have to step in at least call the governor we have enough to warrant a delay here officer you really are dreaming and you've wasted enough of my time would you show this woman out please why are you doing this why are you so anxious to see Macklin dead? Out! Thank you. Get your bloody hands off me! Uh, hey! My lawyers will have me out and back on the street in an hour! And my lawyers will get me out before him! I hate it when they're right. All this and we still haven't made a dent toward helping Roy Macklin. I think we have, Sergeant. Follow my lead. Stop. Mr. Sullivan is a member of the law enforcement community. He made this raid possible. 
Please release him. You set it up? He's lying. It's not how it looks. You take my money and turn me over to the cops? You're a dead man. You're boss, Sonny. Wherever you go, one of us will get you. You are free to go. Go where? You heard them. I won't last a day. Oh, well, then I, I guess you better live it to the fullest, huh, Billy? You're signing my death warrant. I, I demand to be arrested. On what charge? Consorting with known felons? Blackmail? Class three felonies. Not worth our time. Couldn't agree more, Robo. Okay, okay. Murder. I was behind the university massacre. I killed the registrar and his staff, and I framed Macklin. Ask the DA. If you don't believe me, he is in this up to his necktie. Believe me, I'd rather spend 20 years in jail and get up before I'm 40 than uh, die tomorrow. Hello. Yes, this is Sergeant Parks, Metro South. I have an urgent message. Hello? Do you hear me? Hello? Wrong number. Camera three, go ahead. With less than 10 minutes, Roy Macklin is sealed in the chamber of death. Is he secure, girls? Nice and snug, Alberto. Camera one, give me a shot of the button. At the stroke of midnight, the chamber will be activated. Once that is done, it is up to Roy to trigger the final sequence with that button. But don't you touch your remote control button, folks, because we'll be right back after this important message. Aw, oh, go on. Girls can't play war. <laughs> hey, Ruby, let's show them what we gals are made of with the major market doll. It's 900 toys in one, including flamethrower, fancy cake missile, cluster bomb, and an oven for tasty treats when wartime is over. <laughs> We have returned with just seconds left before Roy Macklin ends his life. What thoughts could be running through the twisted mind of this mass murder at this, his final moment? I wantonly murdered 16 innocent people just to watch them die. Come on, Roy, don't do it. Okay, anytime, Roy. Come on. Come on. He's done it. The generator is now building a charge of 3,000 volts. When it redlines, the charge will be released in a single life extinguishing blast. Hey, this is a close set. Don't let him in. What is going on? You going somewhere? You're busting, Mr. VA. Mr. Sullivan has a statement to make. Roy Macklin is innocent. I killed those people, and the DA helped me frame them. Get him out of here. Show's over. This one, too. It's okay, Roy. You're gonna be okay. We're gonna get you some help. You're all right. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Nice work, you two. Let's call it a day. No, thank you. Somewhere there's a crime happening. Let's roll, Madigan. Like you said.
In the heart of the darkness, she's still.